A very good evening and warm, wel warm welcome to all the attendees present here. Hope you are all doing well. In this nice evening, on the behalf of IEEE NTC student chapter, IIT Indore, once again, I welcome you all in the today's webinar. Today we have Dr. Anjali Chaudhary with us, who is a postdoctoral research scientist at University of Wisconsin, Wisconsin Medicine, US, Medicine, USA. Thank you for accepting our invitation for the webinar, Dr. Anjali. She is going to give her webinar on the topic of electrochromic devices present in its future. Um, before the start of the event, let's just mention our sponsor, who are Pfeiffer Vacuum, Zagatech Corporation, Excel Instrument, Streamline Technology, Optimized Solution, Mansa Vacuum Technology, and uh, and uh, and Kazartec. Uh, without the support of these sponsors, uh, we are unable to organize such kind of uh, events. So thanks to our all speaker. For further detail of the sponsoring companies, kindly visit our IEEE NTC student chapter site. Moving further towards the event, I would like to introduce our speaker to the participants. Uh, so, Dr. Anjali Chaudhary ha uh, has completed her B.Sc. in Physics from Hansraj College, Delhi University and moved to IIT Indore in 2015 for M.Sc. and Ph.D. in Physics. And she has completed her uh, Ph.D. in 2020. Her Ph.D. work dis dissertation is based on fabrication and characterization of electrochromic electrode and devices under the supervision of Dr. Rajesh Kumar. She has published more than 35 research articles in various high-impact journals with H-Index 11 and I-10 Index 14 on Google Scholar. Moreover, she has been associated with nanoscience and nanotechnology from last more than five years and her research work also covers pan-media coverage. Research, her research interest includes semiconductor devices in optoelectronics, electrochromic devices and nanomaterial. I request Dr. Anjali to share her screen and continue with, uh, with, the, with the lecture. Participants are requested to keep their audio in mute mode. However, during the talk, uh, they can post their queries in the chat box, which will be discussed at the end of the webinar. Dr. Anjali, you can now proceed with your lecture. Thank you. Thanks, Ruchi, for such a nice introduction. Now. We start with Is my screen visible? Yeah, your screen is completely visible. Okay. So good evening or good morning to everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks to IEEE NTC student chapter for inviting me to give this webinar and giving me the first opportunity after PhD to deliver such a talk. And the today, uh, topic of my today's presentation is electrochromic devices present in future. And outline of talk is as follows. First of all, the application where they have been included in real life and the introduction about the electrochromic devices and what my work was focused on in PhD and the summarizing all the things and the challenges that are still in this field and the acknowledgements that help me to accomplish my PhD and also helping me in sustaining this research work. So first of all, the application, these are some applications that electrochromic devices have. As you have all seen these dear car mirrors, they are fitted with the electrochromic devices when a car uh, spotted some light they automatically diminish their coloration and adjusted their trans transmission to a dim light and that's how they are working in rear view mirrors and this is the mirror this they are also fitted in the electro uh, in aircraft when you are flying 
when you want to diminish the light you just push a button and when you want the full optical transmission you again push a button they can adjust their optical transmission and this is the electroclamic glass fitted in germany in a building and this is a flexible display using electrochromic device and this is the video which shows that how these work this is in real life like uh, this is an example that i have found it on google they are demonizing on application of positive bias and negative bias again they come back to real form and this is in lab which i used to making this device is used persian blue as an electrochromic component it switches between light blue and dark blue state on application of bias like it is light blue and now it turns to some dark blue on application of some 1.5 volt and it again goes back to initial color on application of minus 0.7 volts will take most of the pineapple make you will make me some and these are actually इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिवाइसेस एंड यूज दम इन रियल वर्ल्ड okay and this is how introduction of about how this uh, field come into existence first of all the word electrochromism was coined by the pat in 1961 he observed some color changes in a material uh, which is a tungsten or something in organic material and then he termed as like electrochromic and after that some uh, research has continued been in progress and in 1960 and this come into existence real existence after the work of sk dev who work quite well on the tungsten trioxide and he is pioneer of the field electrochromic he gives um, he gives 10 years to power 4 volt per se, uh, second electric field uh, to the tungsten of a de device of a tungsten and then see it changes its color from transparent to blue and also he developed a theory to explain why it is so and after that uh, many people come from the world to expect to explore various aspects of the electrochromic and in 1995 these guys grandquist monk mortimer and rosensky were quite well on the phenomena in various aspects of persian blue electrochromism and this is electrochromism it is a phenomena of reversible color change by an external bias and it is uh, it change in optical absorption due to various redox when you apply some external bias to a material it changes its color from one form to the another and it is due to because it has various redox state and you are attenuating its redox state by the external bias and it has as i already discussed it has application in smart windows reflective type display rear view mirror etc these are the type of material that has been explored and developed till now for making electronic devices first one is in organic these are the some transition metal oxide tungsten cobalt titanium and nickel and second comes to the organic material which contains the conjugated polymers thiophen pyrrole aniline and some uh, complexes like vialogen and now people are of developing more material like organometallic metal or supramolecular coordination compound which i already discussed that which is a persian blue it is a complex type of quantity of iron and cyan nitrogen and carbon and these again is a description how we can divide these electrochromic materials these are two uh, major qualification depending how they are changing their color whether on a application of a positive bias or a negative bias 
when you apply a positive bias to the material, they are known to be anodic or a P-type electrochromic material and nickel, cobalt, manganese, polyanilin, polythiophene and their derivatives come under the umbrella of P-type electrochromic material. Whereas when you apply a negative bias and see a color change in a material, you can say that these are the N-type or cathodic electrochromic material. And now the question how you identify like whether it is a P-type or N-type of electrochromic material and the answer is using cyclic voltammetry. You use cyclic voltammetry. It has been tremendously used in the field of electrochemistry. You do you take a material and then do its cyclic voltammetry or CV and then see how it, uh, it redox behavior is. But this seems to be incomplete pictures because if you when the material shows its redox behavior in going from lower to a higher potential. So we say that it is a oxidating oxidation or P type of electrochromic material. But when you it river in a show in a higher to a lower value of potential, then it is an N type of electrochromic material. But in this picture, as you see, you cannot figure out whether it is a high to low scan or low. Uh, or low to higher to a lower. So the arrow in the cyclic voltagram is very useful. It gives you direction, like it changes its oxidation state from zero to one. So it is from lower to a higher potential. So it is a P type of electrochromic material. P3H3 is poly three hexyl thiophene, which is a polymer of thiophene. I will discuss it in, in coming slides in more detail. This is a tungsten. So you are scanning from zero to a lower potential. So it is an N type of electrochromic material. And this is a Persian blue in which you see that the scanning is from higher to lower. So it is an N type. And when you again reverse it back from lower to a higher. So it shows its color in both positive as well as negative range of potentials. So the importance of electrochromic devices is as follows. Like it is span a very good average in all over the world and it is continuously growing in the upcoming world. These are some comparison uh, why we are focusing, how we uh, focused on these electrochromic devices. Uh, there are some terms when you talk about anything uh, in, in compare by which you can compare two things like there are some properties associated with. So the properties associated with electrochromic devices are switching speed, how the changes in how much time they changes their color, coloration efficiency, which is related to the charge and their absorbance and the voltage at which voltage they are changing the color and the stability, how long they are stable when you apply a continuous uh, pulses. So P3HT, uh, which I, uh, focused on, on which I was focused on PSD. P3ST is a P-type electrochromic material which I already discussed in the previous slide and it has it change it has a switching speed of one seconds and when you combine it with graphene oxide it shows a switching speed of 20 seconds and till now the electrochromic device which has a very high uh, uh, coloration High, very high switching speed is uh, octocyanothylocyanine, which is a polymer, and it shows a switching speed of 0 0.001 second. And the material which has the, you know, and these are various combinations by which you can get the, by which you can compare the. Uh, various properties of poly 3 exile thiophene based electrochromic devices and till now the most achievable coloration efficiency using one of the polymer is this uh, poly 3 4 ethylene diazothiophene di diocy cyclobenzene which is 1 to 5 0 centimeter square per coulomb i will discuss about all these terms in further in detail hello hello Is there any problem? Hello? Distance pe chahiye. Hello? Ha, ha, ha. 
I request all the participants again uh -huh. to kindly mute their audio. Or please, I I pardon again. Please kindly mute all your mute audios. It it is causing a lot of trouble to the speaker. And this is the present work, which is currently focused on electrochromic devices. People are making use of inorganic electrochromic material and using different pa device paradigm to form electrochromic devices like a coarser structure, which was done, also done by our group using TiO2 and CO3 O4. This is organic electrochromic devices by modifying the structure of polymer and then see what happens to its property. Or you can uh, combine it with some other material and then see what happens to the performance of the device. And the new material, like once I discussed, was metal organic and we also found uh, uh, some new material for making electrochromic devices and exploring the multifunctional role of the electrochromic devices instead of making them useful for electrochromics they can also be useful for energy storage or sensing properties as well so here lies my in research interest to combine the organic electrochromic devices with some other material to improve their performances and i have found a, a natural material for making a electrochromic devices and exploring their uh, properties for other functional application as well so this is the picture that is most useful when you want to understand the color of the electrochromic devices these are the based on some primary color this is red green and blue as you see when you apply uh, when you combine this green and blue you can get a cyan color and when you apply uh, when you combine red and blue in the absorbance spectra you see a magenta and when you uh, combine green and red you see a yellow and this show, arrow shows which light of color is getting absorbed and by the which combination you are getting uh, which type of color like uh, if there are three primary colors right green and blue and if red is absorbed by a device and green and blue is transmitted then green and blue combination is seen as a cyan color and again when you only see red and blue you are able to see a magenta color which is magenta is appears to be a wavelength of five nearly 500 nanometer this is a visible spectra and when you are able to see only red and green color then you are seeing a yellow color and similarly this is like when what happens when you the two colors are two primary colors are absorbed and you are getting only one this is red and green and blue this table combine all these pictures in a tabular form and this is a typical structure of an electrochromic device uh, you take uh, two conducting electrodes and there are these are substrate over there is a transparent conducting electrode which is usually ITO or FTO indium tin oxide or fluorine dot tin oxide and over there there are electrochromic layer which is this here and oh, and with on another electrode you have ion storage or electrochromic layer and in between both of them there is an electrolyte which helps in conduction or movement of ions so first one is i now i'm talking about my work which is a p3st based electrochromic device mechanism people are making electrochromic devices using p3st for a while and they are also using for that organic solar cells and other application cells as well so this is a thiophene at third position you have an hexyl group of uh, attached to it so it is a polythiophene we have fabricated a device using polythiophene in the manner that i discussed that there are two conducting electrode so there are ito here we use ito and we apply a p3ht layer using spin coating and then provide a lithium perchlorate electrolyte in between the, these two electrodes and we see what happens when we apply some voltage and we see there is a color change with the application of one volt when you apply a positive one volt in in a manner that the p3ht electrode is connected to the positive supply of the power supply and other electrode to the negative electrode and when you apply minus one volt it regain its initial magenta color and to quantify its color change using UVV spectroscopy, we have found that initially 
this black curve is at zero volt it absorbs maximum wavelength at 529 nanometer that's why it appears to be magenta and this absorbance can be easily understood in according to the previous figure that i have explained and when you apply one volt it in the gray curve it nearly absorbs all wavelength and it appears to be uh, transparent in real into our eyes and when you again up minus one volt it regain its initial magenta color and to see how um, there is a optical absorbance difference at nearly 500 nanometer and to see how much time it will take to switch between magenta and transparent color we did the absorbance kinetics and found that it took nearly 4.1 second and 1.8 second to switch between two optical states and this is to fab uh, to explore how it is going on why it is changing color we fabricated an open device in which two gold electrodes are separated by a 10 micrometer of distance and then we spin a p3st and lithium perchlorate plus pu pu is a gel type of matrix so this pro and then see under the optical microscope and further we carry out the raman spectroscopy and microscopy to see how these color changes happen so initially at zero volt there is not, no color contrast is here when you we apply a two volt there is some uh, uh, there is some uh, color contrast this electrode goes some dark and when you apply minus two volt it to regain its uh, appearance and it goes to dark why it is so because there is a uh, when you apply uh, uh, positive bias to P3ST, you are inducing some polarons to it, and these can be mapped using the Raman spectroscopy. Initially, there is no shift in the peak position in Raman. As you see, at 1380 and 1450, the peak at E1 and E2 electrode are remain intact, but when you apply a 2 volt bias to the E1 electrode, and, uh, and you see that these peaks come. Uh, uh, come close to apart because these due to their polaron you are modifying the structure of polymer and you are uh, affecting their vibration that's why they are got shifted in the raman which is a signature for getting the vibrational raman peaks of the molecule and when you apply minus two volt which is effectively e2 is positively biased so the same phenomena is uh, traced on the e2 electrodes so this is how the polaron by the polaron formation the electrochromism took place in p3st based device so how we can improve this p3st based device performance because it shows a color switching time of sorry four second and nearly two seconds so we combine it using pcm which is again a poly which is again a organic molecule and we see that it shows a very good properties with a coloration efficiency of 301 second of switching time and 2500 of seconds of stability so this is the pcm it is a buckminster fluorescence type of compound where there is a derivative attached to it and you see that there is a uh, we fabricated a device in a similar way that we are using previously using and then see how it changes its color this uh, device changes its color from magenta to transparent with the application of zero and one volt so there is no improvement in the bias required to switch the uh, color of the device but and this is the flexible device that we have fabricated using this this is just simply our demonstration of how we can make a, a, a flexible device and to see how uh, its performance is going on so we have uh, we do uv with uh, kinetics and then see how long it is stable in absorbance and what is the switching time it take to switch between magenta and transparent state and it take 0.5 and 1 seconds to switch between its two transmission state and this is the coloration efficiency this is the curve by which you can get the how much current is flowing along the device between it so when you apply a negative positive and negative square pulse to the device and by this you can calculate the coloration efficiency this is a change in optical absorbance this minus this at various time 
and this is uh, next uh, is multifunctional electrocomic devices so when we did our experiment using p3ht we have found that in this region 700 to 800 which is very close to the near ir radiation this is uh, using in the transparent state it is absorbing some near ir part so can we increase this amount fractional amount of absorbance using p3ht while do not compromising on its visibility during the uh, during our experiment so we have found that using tungsten people uh, have did uh, using tungsten but the problem with tungsten that you are getting a blue color when you are switching it so we have to uh, restrict our things using uh, a p3st and tungsten we combine them both together in a device and then see we have fabricated uh, tungsten using hydrothermal process and these are some characterization of its scm xl raman and uh, all this and we have fabricated the device in the similar way and using the fto here tungsten is grown on fto and p3st is pin coated on fto and then both of them are combined using some gel electrolyte in between and we see that there is a color change at one volt from magenta to transparent and again at minus one volt it reverses its magenta color and before designing the device we have as i guess one of the uh, person has asked me this question how we decide which material goes with the solid state device before designing a device you do uh, you connected both of them in a simple electrochemical cell fill some electrolyte in between put your electrode here and give some bias if you see a change in color in a liquid medium then you can think of designing them in a solid form device and we use using uh, here using tungsten and thiophene and we see that there is a color change when you apply a positive bias uh, to a thiophene based electrode and negative to a tungsten electrode they changes they are transparent at one volt and minus one volt a thiophene goes to its initial magenta color and nothing goes here to tungsten tungsten just help in improving the ir absorbing part as we see in this spectra initially we got only 0.1 absorbance fraction of uh, using our tungsten by but by using this we got nearly 0 0.4 0 0.7 absorbance improvement so this is the at various wavelength this is a visible one and this is a near ir one so when we apply a bias this go this goes on decreasing and this goes on increasing we do that how much it uh, temperature it can roughly absorb uh, control when we use this device so it can con so it reduces temperature nearly 6 6 degree celsius when you use this device in an experiment where you shine it with a simple halogen lamp and noted the temperature on the upside and uh, after the device using a thermal camera so this is the electrochromic performance of the device it is very good it took only 0.05 and 0.2 seconds to switch between its magenta and transparent state and it shows a coloration efficiency of 378 centimeters square per coulomb and it is quite stable for a long time nearly 9600 seconds and these are current and voltage graph of this cycle and the new material that we have worked on electrochromic devices hibiscus flower herbal use, hibiscus is already has many application in biomedical field and people are people have already talked about it in some bio related things but we the people are not to explore it for some electronic application so we first explore it for electrochromic application so, so how to find out whether it can be useful or not first we took it and then did its cv cyclic voltagram and we and we noticed that it shown uh, show some redox behavior and it change like uh, it showed redox behavior in going from higher to a lower potential so it, it can electrochromic material but we are only seeing its redox behavior uh, and then we uh, in a three electrode system then we chemically reduce it with nabh4 and see what happens to its color and in normal collision it is like 
it is this this is the as extracted and when we reduce it with nabh4 it turns to from magenta to a yellowish color so we expect that it can be a useful material for making electrochromic devices because it goes some chemical redux reduction so the next thing is to reduce it by not chemically but by by putting it in a device form and then reduce it electrically by applying a bias so under uv light it also changes its color from magenta to some other color in yellow to green and when we apply a, when we made a electrochromic device using this we put a layer of uh, hibiscus over one itu and from in between there is a gel electrolyte we always we mostly use gel electrolyte in our making devices because it cannot flow out of the device it is easily controllable as compared to the ionic one and this is the uvv spectroscopy of the as extracted and reduced with nabh hibiscus flower solution and this is the uh, device uvv you clearly see that initially at 0 volt it is magenta and there is a maximum absorbance we get 520 nanometer which corresponds to the magenta color and when you apply a minus 2 volt it nearly absorbing all wavelengths equally and thus it appears to nearly transparent to our eyes and then we did its absorbance spect kinetics and find out that it took nearly three seconds to switch between zero and minus two one minus two volt and it is quite stable for 500 seconds with repeating absorbance switching and these are some highlights of my work this is the heat shield device that i was talking and when one like herbal hibiscus flower we have used in making electrochromic device but my phd group is continuously using these natural in uh, natural flowers and all these for other as well and recently they have been coveraged by the uh, our previous uh, mhrd minister they also tweeted and share our work and this is the future of electrochromic devices now we have made this rigid electrochromic devices we people all also making this flexible devices so next is the thing to fabricate a stretchable device and deformable electrochromic devices and this is the multifunctional application of uh, to use them for a multifunctional role so one single device can use for all sensing variable energy harvesting energy storage and i see as we discussed thermal regulation of the temperature so this is the future extension of our field and this is my contribution to the field I, we have uh, validated the electrochromic uh, mechanism using raman mapping on a p3st based op device and we have fabricated a hybrid electrochromic device which function both as electrochromism and heat shield and we have also found a new material a uh, herbal natural uh, hibiscus flower which can be used for electrochromic making electrochromic devices there are still some challenges which are in this field to fabricate a multifunctional device and use it for a real life application and to study the effect of thickness what the, is the thickness of active, active material how it changes the various properties switching time coloration efficiency and all these aspect that are still need to be explored to study the charge kinetics and chemical reaction that happens at the electrode and electrolyte interfaces and redefine parameter for combining all the global devices under the same platform and i would like to acknowledge my group uh, a phd group which helps me in pursue in completing all these and also very supportive until now and these are uh, some group pictures this is before covid and after that my phd finished all finished so i have these recent pictures and some uh, senior some of my senior which always helpful uh, in taking me and helping me in taking right decision dr shailendra success answer and these are some funding essential which helped me in funding my research during PhD and now during the postdoc as well. 
thanks for all your patience for listening me thank you thank you dr anjali for delivering such a wonderful and knowledgeable uh, webinar participants now the floor is open for discussion anjali i have a doubt uh, in your uh, like uh, the slides which you have shown like why did you have chosen only hibiscus why not some other flower or some other material okay so hibiscus is uh, like we are uh, making tea at home like all indians have the habit so there is a red tea which is famous in japan and all this that is make use of hibiscus flower so once making that red tea using hibiscus we noticed that it changes its color on increasing uh, on adding the lemon so lemon has some acid which is citric acid which is a type of reducing agent so by that incident we tend to focus on hibiscus flower like we are at very preliminary or initial state of making these high uh, electrochromic devices using natural flowers so this is the first, we have to start with some with and this is the incident which motivate us to start with hibiscus flower okay uh, anjali there is a question from the chat section uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a question from dr deepa and he, he is she is asking why fullerens is added how to decide which molecule to be added or not okay so this is a very good question fullerens are useful in making improving performance of uh, uh, solar cells so we make them um, using uh, so fullerene first you check with cv like p3ht as i discussed p3ht is a p type of electrochromic material so there is something which has an n type of nature so it has a tendency to oxidize so we can combine it with something which has a tendency to reduction so p uh, so pcbm has a tendency to reduce that's why p and type p and n type can combine together in a single device so we choose that's why pcbm i do not have the cv of it but when you goes from 0 to minus 2 volt it shows its redox behavior yeah, okay uh, the, uh, ruji one of the participant uh, mr srinivasan uh, raised the hand so uh, so can i ask my clarification yeah yeah please 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 yeah. please go ahead uh, madam did you try it with any solid electrolyte uh, because uh, the liquid electrolyte uh, stability is not uh, so much high so people are uh, tried with uh, some solid electrolyte uh, did you try it with uh, any solid electrolyte instead of uh, gel like medium uh, thank you sir uh, we have tried using the gel electrolyte which is a uh, typically lies between uh, liquid and solid so we are using pu polyethylene oxide and lithium perchlorate we haven't tried using uh, solid electrolyte and can you please specify which type of solid electrolyte we, you are talking about uh, normally there are many most of the lithium ion battery like uh, uh, material people are using some uh, solid material as an electrolyte to avoid uh, mm -hmm. Uh, fire safety precaution so in also dye sensitive solar cell also people are using a liquid type of dye which will be the reason for uh, degradation very quickly so that is why mm -hmm. i am asking did you tried with any solid electrolyte no sir i haven't tried with the, the electrolytes that you are talking i okay. only use lithium perchlorate in po gel as an electrolyte for all my electrochromic studies suppose if you are using lithium perchlorate the lithium is easily oxidized property so mm -hmm. the device performance will degrade so 
I haven't uh, studied its uh, property using without lithium and with lithium, so I cannot comment whether it will degrade or not. Thank you. Any other queries from the participants? If no further queries are left, then let's just thank uh, our speaker. Uh, thank you, Dr. Anjali. Now moving towards closing of our today's event. Uh, I would first like to thank all our participants for uh, being pa patient listener and actively attending this webinar. A special thanks to our speaker, Dr. Anjali Chaudhary, and a big thank you to all our sponsors. And at the end, uh, thank you to all our teammates of the student chapter for successfully organizing the event. Uh, with this, goodbye and, uh, have, and have a very good day to all. Thank you. <laughs>